Hello, uh, Neil Peart here um, with Professor John Good, and he's going to explain to us a very complicated subject. I'm just going to be the cheap device for exposition that he can... Uh, oh, no. I'm the student, <laughs> as I always like to say uh, here at uh, Drum Workshop. I'm the uh, student in residence, always glad to learn from uh, all the great drummers that come through and from John about the uh, nuances of drum construction and everything that uh, that covers and as we've applied it between the two of us in instruments and as John is going to make available to all drummers a truly individual choice in each shell and its note and response that you can combine together uh, as you wish really in um, the creation of your own custom DW drum set. Over to Professor Good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, Neil... Essentially, we've been doing this for a number of years, you and I. Mm -hmm. And I think it started with your R30 kit. Yeah, you started to get some glimmers of inspiration. Back yes, then. I did, because you were, I remember you landed your kit, uh, the red kit, mm -hmm. in my showroom, and you said, look at it, live with it for a couple of weeks, and look at the way I've got it tuned. And because of, before that, I was just giving you stock, pretty much uh, shells that I was making. Right. And you were tuning them in ranges that, you know, maybe they wanted to go, maybe they were. Or that pleased me, yeah. There are yeah. Uh, various um, needs that you have. And um, from my upper to lower toms is a perfect example of that chromatic spread. That the upper ones, I actually like to be very bright and tonal and tune them really tight. And then a lot of times use uh, percussive dynamics so that when I really hit them full out rim shot across the head, that head stretches and detunes slightly. So that becomes a part of the throaty uh, quality that I want the high toms to have. But as I move down into the lower ones, Tonality is everything. I, I, I've done the demonstration before with my DW drums, of tapping that floor tom with a finger, and boom. It just produces a pure, resonant note with incredible sustain. And I love that in the lower toms for them to have that almost tympanic um, note recognition and quality. So that became a part of the um, shell design. It started with the lower toms, I think, and with the bass drum, uh, John applying his ideas in creating tonality by combining the wood grains in different directions. Well, <laughs> having said that, I, in the earlier days of uh, drum shell construction and making, I always thought it was the thicker the shell, the higher the pitch, thinner the shell, lower the pitch, ah. and that's it. Okay, I didn't and even know that. Oh, yeah. Well, I like cymbals. If you think about cymbals, you uh -huh. know, the thicker cymbals have a higher pitch, the thinner ones have a d darker wash. Okay. So, so um, today we're going to mess with that uh, theory hmm. entirely. I mean, and, investigate that science. And the way we want to start doing is I brought three pieces of veneer here, uh -huh. and I've I've drawn some lines on it so you can actually see. They the didn't direction. grow that way. They didn't grow this way. It would be pretty cool to find a tree that does. <laughs> We're looking. But uh, so I've I've drawn an arrow on the direction of the grain, and okay. the, to understand really what we're talking about here, you really need to understand veneer first. And so I will use you as my student. Please. Okay. Here we have a piece of one thirty-sixth of an inch veneer. And this is very, very thin, obviously, mm. and, but the grain is running this direction. If you hold your hand out, mm -hmm. you'll see that that holds itself very well. I mean, it's Keeps very, it shape. very tensile strong. Tensile strength? Yeah, tensile strength. And the grain is running this direction. Now, every piece of wood has a musical note value. And Listen. And here, you'll be able to hear this. Let's, tell me if you can hear this. Yes. There's a note in there. Absolutely. Okay, now, see the way I'm tapping this? I'm going to hold it. I want you to tap it for me. Listen, remarkable. So the, the pitch went up, right? Remarkable. And the pitch went up with tension. Now feel this tension here. Feel, I mean, it's a fair amount of tension for it a wants, thin... It wants to straighten up. It absolutely does. So that's what we're going to call horizontal grain, okay? Mm -hmm. Horizontal grain. Then we have another piece here that is a similar size, if you hold your hand mm -hmm. out. You notice the, the uh, grain is going the opposite direction. It's going short grain. Hold your hand out. And you'll see how it just falls like, like that. Like a piece of wallpaper. <laughs> Basically, yes. And it has a note value as well, sure right? It does, yep. But I wouldn't be able to change that because I can't put any tension on this. Right. So we're going to call that vertical grain, okay? And then I have this wacky, wild, strange diagonal cut piece of grain here. And uh, if you hold your mm -hmm. hand out, you'll notice that it twists like this. It wants to spiral. Now, if you tap the side while I try to straighten it out, look what happens. Tap the side. It seems to me so, even an exaggerated 
A raising of the pitch. It's raising the pitch, right. but it's getting its tension from a whole different place. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call that diagonal grain, right? What does all this mean? Uh, <laughs> how can we use it? How can we use it? When well, we hit things with a stick. I have five drum shells here. And the first shell is the typical, the shells that I love that I've made for many, many years. This is a horizontal grain on the outside, horizontal on the inside, cross laminated in between. It's a seven-ply shell with three-ply reinforcing hoops. A cross-laminated meaning? That one goes this way, the one behind okay. it goes that way, yeah. and then this way. That's interesting. And you have to have that for strength or else oh, they okay. just fold up. All right. Okay, so that's a seven and three. Mm -hmm. Three-ply hoop, right? Then I have my next shell right here is the same shell, seven ply shell, cross laminated, but I've taken the hoops away. Mm -hmm. So the pitch from that shell to this one will go up or down. It should go down because we've taken mass away. And tension? Affected? Well, a little bit because okay. of the tension of the hoop as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, very good. Then I have what we call a thicker eight ply shell right here. This is an eight ply. So now theoretically with Going back to way symbols and mass versus, you know, less mass. Mm. It should go up mm -hmm. because there's more mass here. It's eight ply. But this one is vertical, vertical on the inside, of course, cross laminated. Mm -hmm. And then we have. Will we hear these differences when you yes, just play that show? Okay, great. Then we have what we call the X shell. This is the diagonal grain this way, mm -hmm. then behind it is that way, and so on for eight plies, and it creates an X. So everyone is that spiral yes, exactly. ten tension piece that we looked at earlier. Then we have the newest of them all, mm -hmm. until next week, I'm sure. Ta -da. Uh, this, this is an X shell as well, but I've inserted two vertical plies in here. And let's see what that does, because vertical is going to be the lowest, horizontal is the highest, uh -huh. and that falls in somewhere in between. Right. Okay, so now. So in, in essence, the vertical um, doesn't have any tension, even as it's has less into the tension. Shell. It has less tension. Okay. That so, that particular one ply. By the time you bend those around, then they pick up some tension. Exactly. Okay, because they want again to straighten out. Correct. Right. So here is that first shell: a seven ply shell, three ply hoop. Listen to it. Okay. It's a beautiful sound. It is beautiful. No one can hit a shell like that, by the way. I have tried. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't even try to do this demonstration. But John does this with all these shells and just has the perfect stroke. And here's the, the one without the hoops. Uh -huh. We predicted it would go down. Oh, yeah. Again, beautiful sound. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Then we have the thicker eight-ply shell. Oh. What Surprisingly, goes That's down amazing. more. And wow. very nice yeah. and round. Yeah. And then we have the X shell. Oh, getting down there. Wow. And I've, I've remarked upon this before. These are all exactly the same size of That's shells. Right. And when John first demonstrated this to me, we were standing in the factory in uh, John's little testing area, and he showed me two shells like this, and I could not believe. I, did, I had no knowledge of the nuances of shell construction, but I couldn't believe there was a whole tone difference between two identi otherwise identical pieces of wood. And, and so, yeah, and this one being the last one, listen to how... A bass, that it's a bass drum. It's a bass drum. <laughs> so we're going from here yeah. all the way. Yeah, chase the range, the highest check, or the check lowest the, Check the range here. Highest, all the way to the lowest. It's all in the same amount. size. Isn't that Phenomenal amazing? amount of difference. It's like you could build a drum set out of four identically sized If drums. you could get drum heads to really perform in all those ranges, uh -huh. and one day I think we will. Yeah. What does all this mean, and, and how do we utilize that? Mm.